this session we're going to be talking about the gut microbiome and immunity. A good way to understand our immune system is to think of it like a bank. Through various mechanisms, it protects all the valuables inside from robbers. Those robbers are pathogens, such as viruses and harmful bacteria. The first line of defence against the robbers are things like the strong bank walls. These represent physical barriers, such as our skin, the gut epithelium and mucus. There are metal detectors, which are the toll-like receptors, and the security guards. These are our defence compounds, such as defensins, antimicrobial compounds and cytokines, and our white blood cells, the phagocytes and natural killer cells. These are all components of our innate immune system, which attempt to keep the robbers out and at bay. If the robbers get past these security measures and into the bank, i.e. they are too much for our innate immune system to handle alone, the alarm system is triggered to call for backup from our adaptive immune system, the police, in the form of T and B cells. These guys can deploy additional weapons to fight off or capture the robbers. For example, B cells produce antibodies which can bind and neutralise pathogens, and cytotoxic T cells can attach to and kill infected cells. While the robbers are inside, CCTV captures footage of them to remember them in case they come back and allow for a quicker response. These are our memory T and B cells. So how does our gut microbiome fit with our immune system? Well first up, just as a reminder, within and on our body are trillions of microbes. These are the microbiota. Or when the genetic material of these microbes is included, this is the microbiome. However, the two words do tend to be used interchangeably these days. 95% of the trillions of microbes we host reside in our gut, and it is this gut microbiome which is of particular interest to us, being of great importance for our health. The gut microbiome interacts with the human body and plays a vital role in normal gut development, the promotion of fat storage, the promotion of blood vessel formation, modulation of bone density, the synthesis of vitamins and amino acids, the modification of the nervous system, the breaking down of food compounds, and of course the immune system. The gut microbiome can affect and support the immune system in several ways. Let's set the scene first. Here we have our gut epithelium. This is part of our bank's walls. We have the intestinal lumen up here and the lamina propria below. Lining the epithelium is mucus and within the lumen are the beneficial microbes, let's pop some here, and the pathogens. Within the lamina propria are the cells of our immune system, including the dendritic cells and macrophages, those security guards. The beneficial bacteria provide resistance to the pathogens, those robbers. This can be via indirect or direct mechanisms. One of the indirect mechanisms involves strengthening of the bank walls, i.e. improving the epithelial barrier function. This can be via the action of short-chain fatty acids which are produced by fermentation of dietary fibre by the good bacteria and also through the stimulation of the production of mucus which prevents the pathogens colonising and attaching to the epithelial cells. Another indirect mechanism is the release and activation of the security guards, i.e. antimicrobial compounds, and also the innate immune cells, macrophages and neutrophils. They can even help to call for backup by activating the adaptive immune cells, the T and B cells. The direct mechanisms through which beneficial bacteria can provide resistance to pathogens involves direct competitive exclusion of the pathogenic microorganisms. For example, beneficial bacteria, like our commensal E. coli, can compete with pathogens, like the pathogenic E. coli, for nutrients, usually because they like the same food. Some beneficial strains can use mucin or mucus to produce fucose, which inhibits virulence factor expression by pathogenic bacteria. Virulence factors are molecules which make pathogens more effective. And beneficial bacteria can also compete with pathogens for adhesion sites. If the beneficial bacteria are able to outcompete the pathogens, then the pathogens are unable to take over and cause infections. 
The beneficial microbes also help to modulate, develop and train the immune system, i.e. they train those security guards and police. They do this from birth. The commensal microorganisms help the immune system differentiate between them, they become like self, and the pathogenic bacteria through the use of toll-like receptors. The microbiota also interact with dendritic cells and macrophages to induce T-helper and T-regulatory cells. The interaction with the immune system is not just one way. Unbalanced and poor gut microbiomes can lead to immune health issues such as autoimmunity, allergies and metabolic disorders. And a poor immune system can also cause poor and unbalanced microbiomes. Likewise, a diverse, rich and balanced gut microbiome supports a normal immune system, which in turn supports a diverse, rich and balanced gut microbiome. In order to help sustain your gut microbiota and immune system, you should consume prebiotics. Prebiotics in the form of dietary fibre are food for the gut bacteria. The bacteria ferment the dietary fibre to generate energy, allowing them to grow and produce essential short-chain fatty acids. More beneficial bacteria and their byproducts means they are able to outcompete the pathogens and support the immune system. Eating a range of complex prebiotics like that found in Livox Gold Kiwi Fruit Powder allows for the growth of a range of beneficial gut bacteria, resulting in the desirable rich, diverse and balanced gut microbiome and subsequently a healthy immune system.